Christian B was born in 1976. His mother put him up for adoption when he was one year old. His adoptive parents, Bridget and Fritz, are believed to have adopted two other boys. And the couple raised the children in this house, where they reportedly ran a strict regime. An elderly neighbour knew the family well and remembers seeing the boys often. Dass sie immer aus der Tüte Brötchen gegessen haben, in, da in der Gasse, ne, waren sie da in der Gasse gestanden und haben aus der Tüte weggegessen, denke ich, die wären nicht satt daheim. Ne. Age 16, 1992. His adoptive father was involved in a very serious car accident and as a result, they could no longer look after him. Christian B moved to and was raised by a church welfare institution. And that year, he notched up his first criminal record for a house breaking. Less than two years later, aged 17, and not yet a legal adult, he was convicted of much more serious offences the sexual abuse of two girls, aged six and nine. But instead of serving his two-year prison sentence in Germany, Christian B headed for Portugal. What is really crucial is to find out where Christian B was living prior to Madeleine's disappearance and in the days, weeks and months after her disappearance. She was taken in May 2007 the year before Christian B was known to be living at this farmhouse. It's just three kilometres from the Ocean Club. But in April 2006, he was imprisoned for fuel theft. And when he came out, eight months later, he never returned. So where did he go? Christian B was known to have stayed at another address in a small town 40 minutes drive from Praia de Luz, called Ferral. Can I come in? Yes. Great, thank come you. Come on in. Thank you for agreeing to chat. This landlady rented her house to a friend of Christian B's. She spotted his vehicle parked there from time to time. He did have some sort of a camper van and he did sleep in that camper van outside the villa. This is a man who was very mobile. He was drifting around the Algarve in his multiple vehicles and selling drugs. But the landlady can't be precise about the dates. And we still don't know where he was when Madeline disappeared. Back in Germany, I'm about to meet my most important lead so far. His name is Dieter. Hello, Dieter. He visited the house that Christian B's friend rented in Farau. It's taken quite a lot to get this interview. What Dieter claims he can do is place Christian B in a camper van in the Algarve. And of course, if his recollection is correct... That's really important because it's around the time of Madeline's disappearance in 2007. Dieter claims he met Christian B and Farrell in April or May. Madeline disappeared on the 3rd of May. Ja, ich habe mit ihm wie ich ihn getroffen habe, draußen begrüßt habe und äh, sind wir ins Gespräch und dann habe ich nur gesagt, äh, hast ein riese äh, Wohnmobil. What he says Christian B told him then still haunts Dieter. Ja, hat er gesagt, er will er, ähm, nach Deutschland oder irgendwo da unten oder Russland dagegen 50 Kilo Gras äh, mit rüberfahren. Hat er Und ich habe mir dann nur noch gefragt, wo er das verstecken will. Und dann hat er zu mir im gleichen Abend ja, hat er gesagt, er hat ihn versteckt, er hat es so umgebaut. Da hat er ihn versteckt, das ist so groß, da, da, dass da kleine Kinder reinpassen. 
Und da wollte ich mir das aber zeigen lassen noch einmal, aber das hat er dann äh, mir natürlich nicht gezeigt. When police seized the Tiffin Allegro motorhome at Christian B's property in 2016, they reportedly found children's clothing inside, including swimsuits. Knowing now what you know, the conversation he had with you in the camper van relating to the size of a compartment being that of a child, what are your thoughts? Dass vielleicht diese sogar in dem Zeitraum da drinnen war. Das ist, geht mir schon die ganze Zeit nach, also dass ich immer daran denken muss. Hoffentlich war die nie da drinnen, wo ich da drin gesessen habe. I had no idea that Dieter, when he saw that motorhome, he thought that Madeline may well have been inside. And that's only something that dawned on him 13 years later, when Christian B came to the attention in the media as being involved in Madeline's disappearance. Dieter cannot be specific. It's either April or May 2007. But according to his account, we can place Christian B as staying in Faral, which is 60 kilometers away and a 40-minute drive from Praia de Luz, the month before or after Madeline was taken. When the German authorities began investigating Christian B, they linked him to a crime that had sinister echoes of Madeline McCann's case. In 2005, two years before the abduction of Madeline, Christian B broke into a property in Praia de Luz and raped a 72-year-old woman. He was living at the farmhouse at the time, and Jal, a local journalist who has been helping me, has found a narrow pathway leading directly to the victim's home. If you go up this road, you will end up in that house where um, Christian B lived. He could easily walk down the road and then he would face this house. It's a route that would have given Christian B a quick getaway. She was just staying there when she heard a noise. Christian jumped the wall got into the property. When she heard the noise, she went to look to see what happened. And that's when he attacked her from behind. So we've got the court file pushed against the floor, forced her upstairs, grabbed her by the hair and neck, had a curved knife of about 30 centimeters, and then went in the bedroom, black hood over eyes, holes cut out, then onto the bed, opened her top, bra, and stripped her of her trousers, turned on the light, started to hit her across the face, the buttock, and the lower body. He ties her up, blindfolds her and puts a rope around her wrists behind her back and then rapes her when the German authorities tested DNA evidence from the crime scene they found a match with Christian B in 2021 he was convicted and is currently serving seven years in jail. Yet, even now, he still denies his guilt. We know what was taken from this property was money, mm -hmm. 100 euros, and a laptop. So to commit a rape and then to steal afterwards entirely fits Christian B's profile, doesn't it? 100%. Back in Germany, I'm meeting a former associate of Christian B, who claims to have seen evidence of sexual assault 
on two further unidentified victims. Zu mir hat er gesagt, er ist der Kellner. Und später hat er dann gesagt, dass er einbrechen geht auch da. While Christian B was in prison in 2006, Manfred Seifer and another associate, Helga Bushing, say they found evidence of the assaults when they visited Christian B's farmhouse. Ich bin mit Helga zum Haus gegangen. Auf dem Weg, die Türen waren offen, steht alles auf im Haus. Ja, auf alle Fälle ist es unordentlich bei ihm gewesen. Aber alles eben voll mit technischen Geräten, Fotoapparate, Videos und alles da. Jede Menge teure Sachen, Pässe, alles liegt da rum. Bestimmt hat es wie Sau da drin. Also Helga hat dann die Kamera gefunden und ich weiß nicht, was er noch mit einem Kleinkram noch irgendwas. Und noch irgendwas, ich weiß aber nicht mehr was. Ich glaube, Kassetten waren auch noch ein paar dabei oder sowas. Entweder am selben Abend oder am nächsten Morgen kam man dann bei mir an und sagte, hier, guck dir an, was ich hier gefunden habe. Da hat er mir das dann gezeigt. What did you see on this screen? Zuerst eine ältere Frau. Die war irgendwo am Tisch oder was. Und da hat er wohl mit so einer Eisenstange oder ich bin ja meine, so ein Jahr gewesen, auf die Brust geschnippt oder sowas. Und gehört habe ich einmal, dass sie geschrien hat, Aiuto, das ist Italienisch, das verstehe ich zufällig und heißt Hilfe. Dass sie am Tisch gelegen hat, rumgegangen wollte, irgendwas, ich glaube, sie sollte auch blasen oder irgendwas. Und dann habe ich schon, das war alles, was ich sehen habe, kurz. Das war alles, was ich von den ganzen Videos gesehen habe, weil es war schon wieder weg. But Safer says he saw another video, this time of a sexual assault on a young girl. Etwas mit den Händen so nach oben an diesem Balken. Und hat gesprochen auf Deutsch, als sicher, das ist eine Vergewaltigung. Hat er gesagt, nein, das ist keine Vergewaltigung. Und dann sollte sie blasen, dann ist er da hingegangen. Und dann sollte sie blasen und dann musste sie wohl kotzen oder so. Und dann war sein Kommentar darauf, kotzen wir nicht mal einen schönen neuen Teppich voll. Und das war dann, also dann habe ich nichts mehr gesehen. Ich denke nicht, das ist kranke Welt. How old would you say the girl was? 15, 16, so von der Optik. You saw Christian B in the video, did you? Ja, auf dem Video habe ich ihn richtig gesehen. Da habe ich auch das Gesicht gesehen bei den jungen Mädchen. What did you do after seeing that video? How did you feel? Ich habe da nicht drüber nachgedacht. Weg, weg, wie immer. Immer wenn es bei mir Probleme gibt, bin ich weg. Seyforth and Bushing's testimony helped convict Christian B of the rape of the 72-year-old woman. The tapes themselves were never found, so could not be produced in court. But if this alleged evidence of Christian B's sexual assaults could be obtained, it could be vital in linking him to the disappearance of Madeline. So, what could have happened to those tapes? Ich weiß nicht, wie mir Helge mal gesagt hat, hat er die mit dem Wohnwagen verkauft. Seaforth and Bushing say they took the tapes from the farmhouse in 2006 and they were allegedly in Helga Bushing's camper van when he sold it sometime later. And it's probably there, there to the left. That's right here. Yeah, see? The person who bought the camper van may know something about these tapes. If found, they could help the Madeleine McCann investigation because they feature the prime suspect offending near Prior de Luz. Hello, little one. Hello, Hello, dog. I'm a former British detective. I'm an investigative journalist. I'm making a programme about Christian B and the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. And I'm after 
Is he around? I understand that, but it, I need to ask some very important questions with regards to Christian B. Um, maybe you can help me, and it may massively help. And just your little piece of information, just in terms of answering these very simple questions, could really, really help. Okay? So the van, you know, the van, the blue van. Will you just come and speak to us? Five minutes, and we'll be out of your hair, honestly. What's in your hat? You got a knife? You got a knife in your hand. Huh? No, what you will do? What's happened? No. That's not no. the way to deal with it, is it? No. That's not no. the way to deal with it. Come on. Just talk to us. Five minutes. What are you going to do? Come on, get in the car, get in the okay. car, get in the car. Get in the car. And they are aggressive, aren't they? He's got a shovel. Yeah, a shovel huh? He's coming yeah, out, he's coming out, let's go. Oh, okay, fuck me, he's coming. Oh. It's disappointing because I'd hoped to get some real answers as to the whereabouts or even the existence of the videotapes. This small village is where Christian B is said to have stayed in the weeks after the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. The suspects reported to have turned up here 30 miles from where she went missing without money, asking for work. Christian B is understood to have stayed in this village for several months and was often seen at this restaurant and with his camper van that police have appealed for information on. And several people have told us they found him strange and that he was intimidating. They said he spent time with two friends who rented this house and claimed they were fostering German children. This woman, who asked not to be identified, rented the property to the couple. She says locals feared him and he was seen with a weapon on his belt. Everybody was really terrified of him um, because my friend's daughter had a, a health issue, a mental health issue, and uh, my friend was very scared that, you know, he could, he could really do something to her. And, and being seen with a gun, I suppose, you know, people will, 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 would be frightened. In Germany, police are also investigating the suspect over the disappearance of five-year-old Inga in 2015. And the father of another German child, six-year-old René, who went missing from this Algarve beach in 1996, says police have told him there could be a link. This local fireman was part of the search team. We never had any evidence about where René had been seen. One person said he was near the river but wasn't very sure. Normally when people drown in this part of the coast, the body appears after a few hours. They closed the case after only eight months, but now Portuguese police have reopened their investigation into the rape of an Irish woman. Hazel Bean believes she was the victim of the same man who later raped an elderly American woman. He is a German drifter known as Christian B, now the main suspect for the abduction of Madeleine McCann. This week in court, police collected their own archived files and relaunched their investigation, even though they once destroyed vital forensic evidence. If you close the process because no suspect was found, then it means that those forensic evidence are no longer needed, then the judge must order them to be destroyed. But they, they might be needed in 5, 10, it's 15 possible. years. But uh, uh, thinking like that, we would be in a different way or in an indirectly way violating our principal um, uh, constitution, constitutional rules and principles, which is we cannot have a database of, uh, for, uh, of uh, biological evidence. Hazel Bean was a holiday rep in Prada, Russia in 2004. She lived alone at the complex where she worked. Her attacker climbed in through her balcony while she was sleeping. In apartment 22, he tied her up, gagged her, raped her repeatedly and left her bleeding. Now the case is reopened, we can't show the police file, but it reveals detectives destroyed poor quality forensic evidence because there was no suspect. Hazel Bean told Portuguese police that her attacker was white and slim with blonde hair and blue eyes and possibly German. 
In these documents, it says the case was closed because detectives had no record of any potential suspect fitting that description. But that wasn't true. Five years earlier, in 1999, the police had photographed Christian B. He was being extradited to Germany for child sex crimes. So he was in their files, and he did fit the rape victim's description. If police do build a case against Christian B, it's unlikely he'll ever be charged with rape. Portugal has a statute of limitations of 15 years. Madeleine McCann vanished in Portugal in 2007. Police are still waiting to interview Christian B about her disappearance. Christian Bruckner has dramatically become the prime suspect. I see a lot of clues and a lot of evidence that he is a psychopath who um, has an escalating fantasy of violence which finally maybe ended in abducting and killing Maddie McCann, yes. June 4th, 2020. After 13 years that have baffled police investigators in the UK and Portugal, German authorities make a shock announcement in the case of Madeleine McCann. The public prosecutor's office is investigating a 43-year-old German national on suspicion of murder. We are assuming that the girl is dead. Their suspect is soon identified as 43-year-old Christian Bruckner, a sex offender currently in prison for the rape of a 72-year-old woman in Portugal. Christian B, I mean, he is a serial offender in many past cases. He was criminal and he was in prison and he did it again and again and again and again, 17 or 18 times. Mark Hoffman is a Berlin-based crime and intelligence analyst who works with German police and has studied Christian Bruckner's sordid criminal past. I mean, this absolutely matches um, the, the most serial offenders. It's all about power and control, and they like to do it in environments which are their comfort zone. So they are doing what they do near to the places where they live. Between 1995 and 2017, Christian Bruckner drifted between Germany and the Portuguese coastal town of Pra de Luge. He was a small-time drug dealer and thief, breaking into holiday homes and hotels. His house at the time was just over a kilometre from the Ocean Club Resort, where Madeleine McCann disappeared. For some laymen, this is quite confusing. How? How can this be the same offender? I mean, raping elderly women and abusing or raping or killing children. Many child molesters are not pedophiles. So for them, it's not about the young age itself. It's about weakness, it's about vulnerability, and it's about feeling some sense of power. May 3rd, 2007. Jerry and Kate McCann go to dinner with friends at a tapas bar within the Ocean Club Resort complex. Having checked their children a number of times that night, at around 10 p.m., Kate McCann goes back to the room. She finds Maddie missing and the bedroom window open. Given the German investigators have said very clearly that they believe Madeleine McCann is dead, uh, do you accept that they must have significant information? My experience of working with the German police is that they are very careful um, what they say. The fact that they have made that statement is of itself significant. Deutschen Staatsangehörigen wegen des Verdachts des Mordes. Do you have irrefutable evidence that Madeleine McCann is dead? Uh, we have uh, strong evidence that uh, Melly McCann is dead and uh, that our suspect killed her, but uh, I'm not allowed and I'm not able at the moment to tell you all the details of our evidence. 
German prosecutor Hans Christian Walters leads the investigation into Christian Bruckner. You don't have a body, obviously. Yes. We, we don't have the body and no parts of the body, but we have enough evidence to say our suspect killed Madeleine McCann sometime in the last two years when we realized that she's dead. Maddie was abducted between 9 and 10 p.m. Prosecutor Walter's team discovered that during that same time, a mobile phone linked to Christian Bruckner was used in the immediate area of her hotel room. We know that the phone number which was used by our suspect uh, on the 3rd of May 2007 was connecting in the mess belongs to the Ocean Club in uh, Praia da Luz. So yes, we think so. Walter's team also discovered that the day after Madeline's disappearance, Bruckner deregistered a second car he owned. Abducted Maddie McCann. It is also likely that he not just abducted but killed her. And killing is likely for different reasons. Number one, it's likely because it's part of the fantasy. But number two, it also just could have practical reasons not to be um, arrested for this crime because she was old enough to talk. If I look at his life and his criminal record, he's quite clear about his fantasy about abducting, torturing children, to, to name it, would be a serial killer in the making, and this absolutely is a red flag, yes. How's it going? Bad with me. Want to f a little girl. It's 2013, six years after Madeleine McCann's disappearance, and German police believe this is their prime suspect, Christian Bruckner, allegedly in a pedophile chat room. Catch something small and use it for days. Oh, if the evidence is destroyed afterwards, I will document exactly how they will be tortured. Well, let's see. Not only talking, but also doing it. He's very, very clear uh, about his fantasy about abducting children um, and, and torturing them and using them for a couple of days. So, so these are very clear words. For German criminal analyst Mark Hoffmann, Christian Bruckner absolutely fits the profile of a psychopath. A psychopath who lived less than two kilometers from the hotel where Madeline was abducted and close to where he brutally raped a 72-year-old woman and videotaped his crime. Christian Bruckner left Portugal in 2007 during the desperate search for Madeline McCann. He moved to the German city of Brunswick. An insider who knew him, speaking anonymously, says for years Bruckner ran a kiosk next to a kindergarten. There's a kindergarten and a junior school next door. They spent their pocket money on sweets here. He gave the kids lollies for free. Even more chilling was that Bruckner's friend says he talked of creating a dungeon in this his rented cottage. Just like the one Austrian pedophile Joseph Fritzl used to imprison and abuse his daughter for 24 years. That one with the blue roof, he lived there. He had a cellar and he said he wanted to line it with heavy plates, like the guy in Austria. This was in 2013, when police allege he was fantasizing about potential crimes in a pedophile chat room. 
Then in 2015, just two hours' drive from where Bruckner was living, another little girl, Inga Gerrick, disappears. It is the 2nd of May, almost eight years to the day since Madeleine McCann went missing. A dark van similar to one Bruckner owned at the time is sighted leaving the abduction site, but Inga is never found. Her case is now being re-examined. And German prosecutor Hans Christian Walters says he believes there are others. I think that uh, there are more victims of our suspect of other crime, there are other investigations. First, just the name Christian Bruckner. Then, in 2017, more information. Reports that Bruckner made a drunken confession to a friend. Police searched a deserted factory owned by Bruckner and made a grim discovery. Hard drives and USB sticks hidden in a plastic bag buried with his dog. So on the property of Christian B, they, they found material which, according to the current information, is like 8,000 pieces, videos and pictures. And this is quite typical for these kind of offenders. They are filming what they do, and sometimes they are fantasizing about their crimes every day and every night, over and over and over and over again. Bruckner's lair uncovered many secrets, and not just his ghastly buried trove of videos. There was more. And over there was where his American camper was parked, 10 meters long. In his camper van, police discovered the swimsuits of little girls. Together with the mobile phone tray showing Bruckner was in the area, then evidence from a witness or photograph putting him at the Ocean Club between 9 and 10 p.m. on the night of May 3rd, 2007, would be the last piece of the puzzle. And for Jerry and Kate McCann, the final terrible truth. This case fit with an opportunistic. Most likely, she woke up, she walks out the back patio door, and as she walks down the step and onto the road, that is where the opportunistic offender struck. The evidence for Christian B's involvement in Madeleine McCann's abduction is still circumstantial. I just can't link him directly to the crime. But just when I need a breakthrough, Christian B responds to our letters requesting an interview. I've got a letter from him. It reads, after careful deliberation, I came to the conclusion that no harm would come from giving you an interview. And he signed it, Christian B. He's going to give us an interview. He can, if he wants to, and he's not responsible, completely and utterly exonerate himself from this. But if he is responsible and giving me an interview, He'll fall apart. Within months of Madeline's disappearance, Christian B came back to Germany. I need to find people who knew him, visit some of the places he lived, and understand his offending behaviour to see if there are any definitive clues linking him to Madeline McCann. The first place in Germany he shows up in late summer 2007 is an allotment site on the outskirts of Hanover. He rented the allotment for around six months and built a makeshift home there. 13 years later, in 2020, following the announcement that he was the prime suspect, police searched the area and the world's media descended on the site. And there, underneath his makeshift house, they found a cellar. But the search yielded nothing to link him to Madeline. So if Christian B had anything to hide, it was somewhere else. By the end of 2007, Christian B left the allotment. For the next five years, he travelled between Portugal and Germany. 
By 2012, the McCanns were battling to keep the search for Madeline alive. And Christian B moved to nearby Brunswick, where he led an apparently innocent life, running a kiosk, selling confectionery. Sabine used to work for Christian B at the kiosk. She gives an alarming account of what went on behind closed doors. I didn't even know. Da war mir was ich nicht so unnahbar, der hat nicht viel erzählt und hat immer nur gesagt, das und das und das muss gemacht werden und wenn ich wiederkomme, ist das gemacht. And who would you see in the kiosk? Immer nur junge Frauen, so 16, 17 Jahre alt. Christian B was 36 years old when he first moved into the kiosk in 2012. Ich wusste, dass er alle. Der hat auch eine Russin gehabt. Und die hat er wohl vermöbelt, aus dem Grund ist er abgehauen. Ich sagte, was willst du von so einem alten Kerl? Ja, Geld. Ich sagte, was machst du dafür? Ja, dafür schlafe ich mit dem. Ich sagte, bist du bescheuert? Ich habe so eine grün und blau rausgehen sehen. Nächsten Morgen. Ich habe gedacht, das ist ein Schwein von Mann. Männer, die, die Frauen schlagen, haben nichts im Kopf. Die sind alle dusselig. Do you think Christian B could be responsible for the abduction and murder of Madeleine McCann? Also, weiß ich nicht, aber wer Frauen schlägt, dem traue ich alles zu. Das ist für mich kein richtiger Mann. Christian B committed another shocking assault whilst living at the kiosk. One which would catch up with him in 2016 and ultimately lead to his arrest. Dina is a local German journalist who has been working with me as a researcher. We discuss distressing information describing the abuse of a child. So the police get a report of a domestic incident that causes them to go to see Christian B at the kiosk. He's not there. They search it. What do they find? Yeah, um, as a part of this investigation, uh, they confiscated his computer and photographic um, equipment. Right. There they found child abuse material. On further research, they found that Christian B was in a relationship to a woman, a single mom. Right. She got a five-year-old child. Christian B took this child to park and made photos of her. On these photos, you could see that this girl was sitting in between his open legs and um, he was like um, showing his down. And he was exposing himself. He was expo yeah. And um, this was one thing. And the other thing uh, uh, the police found was like um, photos where he actively uh, um, sexually assaulted this child by uh, putting her under panty away aside and um, touching her there. He was convicted of assaulting this five-year-old girl, which adds to his previous child abuse convictions. Christian B is a dangerous paedophile. One thing that runs through his offending behavior is he keeps the footage of his offenses. While at the kiosk, he also owned a second property, an old box factory outside of town, where he sometimes lived in his camper van. Abandoned factory, car, even a little kid's ball. It's a perfect location for somebody if they wanted to to hide things, to commit crime without being seen. And it does beg the question, why did he buy this property? In 2016, the factory was searched by police after a dog walker was alerted to a strong and foul smell. It turned out to be a buried dog belonging to Christian B, but hidden underneath it was a cache of child abuse material. This reminds me of a number of scenes that I've seen in my time in the police 
where children are taken to derelict buildings and sexually abused. Just in here, there's a, a bed. It looks very similar to some of the child abuse videos that I've seen. And, you know, you never forget them. I've been given a very significant document about the police search by a source. I can tell you, they found 8,000 files of child abuse material, including with children, animals, and the children were aged between zero, so that's babies, and 12 year old. There were 100 files found, which Christian B was in. So they could see him on camera, and they identified some of those abuse locations being here in the box factory and also at his flat beside the kiosk. They found a girl aged four to five and the mother, both of them posed in photographs. The child was not Madeline, but was a blonde girl, but they've been unable to identify who that girl is. So who is that four to five year old girl? in films. How did he end up having access to children to bring them here? Was he alone when he committed the offences? Were other people with him? Is this part of a paedophile ring? Is there a number of other individuals working with Christian? And that for me is a real, real worrying concern. Because if you carry on in that line of thought, then it gets pretty dark. I can find no record of Christian B being charged in connection with anything found at the box factory, but my visit to the site has really concerned me. Amongst the material found was a horrific online chat that Christian B had about molesting and torturing a child. And I've tracked down the person that Christian B was talking to. So I'm on my way to try and speak to a man using the name Panicspats66. He was in communication with Christian B. This is dated the 29th of September, 2013. This extract from the chat is very graphic and disturbing. It shows the real depravity of two people discussing child sexual abuse. Up until now, nobody in the public domain, including the media, have known who Panicspats66 is. But I've found out, hasn't taken a lot, I've found him quite easily. I find an address for him in a small town in southern Germany, and now I need to speak to him. That one's open, this one's got shutters up. I have a number, so I'm going to try calling him and set up an interview. And who is Panicspat66, is that you? Unfortunately, I can't play the rest of the brief conversation I had with Panicsbat 66 because he would not give permission to use it. He did confirm he was Panicsbat 66 and that he had been in contact with the police, but he claims he never knew Christian B and could tell me no more. It's a dead end, but next I examine Christian B's alleged confession to Madeline's abduction. Christian B is a dangerous child sex offender. But does the evidence that he abducted Madeline stack up? A key witness in the prosecution case is his former associate, Helga Bushing. I am told Bushing's claim is that Christian B confessed to him at a music festival in 2008 that he is responsible for Madeline's disappearance. But then he took almost 10 years to tell the police this information. I have tracked him down, but he refused to speak publicly. He did, however, confirm his claim that Christian B confessed to him, but he would not tell me what he said. Other inquiries around Bushing do pay off. A contact sends me a video recording of him talking to another person, where he says he will give details, but for a price. So that was fascinating. I can't show you the video, unfortunately, because I've been given it by a source and it hasn't been cleared by Helga. He's wearing this, this flap jacket, which is clearly French police. And he's not just wearing that, he's got his face 
covered with some kind of mask. And this is how the conversation goes. So he says that he wants money, but he doesn't want it directly to him. He wants 50,000 euros transferred to the McCann's fund. And only when that's done will he talk. He says this is very dangerous. You should not get involved in this case. This is the really key bit. He says he and Christian B know it all. His credibility after having watched this video is in real doubt. I think Helga's evidence has to be treated with real caution. Having a witness like Bushing as a key part of the case against Christian B does concern me. But then I contact a police telecoms expert about another cornerstone of the prosecution case, the mobile phone call made on the night Madeline was taken. German police say they believe that Christian B is the user of the mobile phone number 680, which pinged to a mast in Praia de Luz that evening. But if he is, exactly how close to Madeline's apartment does that place him? Behind me is the mast where 680 pinged on on the night Madeline disappeared. And just 200 yards up here is the Ocean Club where Madeline vanished from. This map shows all the mobile phone masts around Praia de Luz in May 2007. We know that the 680 phone connected to the one in Praia de Luz, but I have learned that it has a range of 35 kilometers and you can't fix a phone location from just one mast. Even if the Praia de Luz mast was the closest one to the 680 user, it still covers a large area surrounding the town. So we cannot say that the user was outside the Ocean Club. All we can say for certain is that they were within 35 kilometers of the Praia de Luz mast. This could be a massive problem for the prosecution's case, but overnight I get a call that could affect their whole investigation. My colleague, Portuguese journalist, Jao Gardinho, has been working alongside me and has covered Madeline's disappearance from the start. Morning, Mark. Morning, mate. How are you? Good, good, good. good. Yeah. Listen, I got a phone call last night, late last night, with a piece of information which does offer a completely different perspective. Really? So my call last night <laughs> is that the number 680 that we are told was being used on the evening of the 3rd of May 2007 by Christian B. But that might not be true. It's a massive development that it would turn around the whole investigation, I believe. My source, who, who won't be identified, just won't be identified, too close to how they got the information. My source is official, and they called the 680 number multiple times between April and December 2006, and each time it was answered by a German friend of Christian B's. The alleged 680 user lives just outside Faral, a 40-minute drive from Praia de Luz. The same village that Christian B was parked, living in his van around the time that Madeline disappeared. I'm now going to see the man I'm told was using that number five months before Madeline was taken to see what he has to say. He is so vital, but can I get him to talk to me? Oh, there's someone there. A lady. She's coming out. How are you? My name's Mark Williams Thomas. I'm a former British detective, and I'm investigating the Christian B case. The man's wife doesn't want to appear on camera, but is happy for us to record the audio of our conversation about her husband's phone use. I've established the crucial telephone number ending 680 was actually 
Mark's telephone number because he was using that 680 number during the period of 2006 when Christian B was in jail. Does that make sense? All time since we are here, he has the same telephone number. And it's not 680? Wait a second. 964. Okay. So it's a different number than that. I've seen it written in black and white. I'm at pains to understand how he would answer the telephone number, 680. I don't know. The question is, I suppose, is, did he have another number or was he with somebody who had that number? Maybe, I don't know. OK, thank you so much. OK. Take care. Okay. Thank you, bye-bye. Really lovely lady. She has given me his telephone number. She says for the whole period of time that she's been living here, he's had the same telephone number. But what she can't say is whether he uses another telephone number uh, and communicates on it. She said, I don't know. She said, I would always phone him on one number, but that doesn't mean to say he hasn't got a different telephone number. During this investigation, I have established a direct line of communication with Mr. Volters, the German prosecutor. Now I need to put to him this new information about the phone. I just had a chat with the prosecutor. So the telephone number 680. He has a witness, and that witness has told him, them, that Christian was using that number. But not on the 3rd of May. We have no evidence that says that he was using it on the 3rd of May. All we have is one witness saying that that telephone number was being used by Christian B at some stage prior to Madeline's disappearance. We say, and they've had a couple of phone calls, and every time they rang, Christian B answered the phone. That's their evidence. Yeah, we're over a year now, and there's not one other person who's come forward and said Christian B was using that number 680. Nobody. Why? Why? So this means no one, it seems, can currently place Christian B in Pride de Luz on the night Madeline disappeared. I now turn my attention to the police's second major line of investigation. The Christian B re-registered his vehicle in Germany the day after Madeline disappeared. Police say that this red Jaguar is one of the cars that Christian B was driving around that time. He registered it to a new owner his former friend and landlord, Alexander Bischoff, and to his address near Munich, Germany. And with the help of reporter Dina, we track him down. Hello? Bin da, Bischoff. The police and prosecutors make it suspicious that the car was registered to you on the 4th of May, the day after Madeline disappeared. Is that suspicious? Yeah, the plan was actually schon ich sag mal aus der Erinnerung ein paar Wochen früher, weil er erwähnt hat, dass es mit München jetzt nicht mehr geht und dass er da irgendwie das Auto anderweitig zulassen möchte, dass er damit fahren kann und dass er halt flexibel ist, hat mir die Unterlagen zugeschickt und ich habe das Auto dann zugelassen. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. For as far as I'm concerned, the Jaguar has got nothing to do with it. It's a complete red herring. Yeah. It's just simply, he was getting rid of a car and it happened to be registered on the 4th of May. All that paperwork had been done previous to that. The third key piece of police evidence linking Christian B to Madeline that I know about is Christian B's alleged confession to Helga Bushing while at a music festival. But it concerns me that Bushing did not tell the police about it until almost 10 years later. Bushing also testified to police that he had seen videos of Christian B sexually assaulting two women. The police have never found the tapes, but Bushing's friend Manfred Seifer testified in court that they had shown them to a bar owner in the only bar in Santa Clara, an hour north of Praia de Luz. Francis, you used to own the bar in the town. Tell me about that. I did. I used to own a Chaminade in Santa Clara. Do you remember Helga? I only remembered when we went through all my photographs. And I did remember his face. Um, he must have come just a few times. So I'm after information on a very specific period of time. 
2006-2007, Helga Bushell and Manfred both say that during that period of time, they were in your bar and they showed a woman the video of another person being raped that they'd taken from Christian B's house. Is that you? Couldn't have been. There's just no way. Why? I ran the place with my son and he would have called the police. They are very clear that they showed it to a woman in the bar. Did you have other females working? No, there was obviously other women that come to the bar, but I'm the only woman that ever worked there, ever. If Bushing's sexual assault video testimony is unreliable, it could put into real doubt his account that Christian B confessed. It is really important because Helga is central to the German prosecution's case. He is a key witness. He is the man that gave the evidence to the police that Christian B is responsible because Christian B has told him he's murdered Madeleine McCann. And if his witness evidence in relation to the tapes being shown to a woman in the bar in Santa Clara can be shown to be false, what else of his evidence is false? The police have made Christian B their prime suspect, but to charge him with Madeline's abduction or murder, they will need stronger evidence than anything I've been able to find. The 680 mobile number may not have belonged to Christian B. Christian B re-registering his car appears unrelated to Madeline, and Helga Bushin's confession claim may not be reliable. The police investigation is ongoing, and they may have other evidence we don't know about to link him to Madeline's disappearance. But then I get a call from a source close to Christian B that could change everything. We've got someone saying that night they were with him. But why hasn't this come out? I can't quite believe what I've been told that on the night of Madeline's disappearance, Christian B was with a woman outside of Pride de and spent the night with her. And if that's true, can't have been involved in the disappearance of Madeline McCann. I now need to find this woman as quickly as possible and get her to give me her account. There's been a major development in my investigation. Christian B may have an alibi, a woman he claims he was seeing the week Madeleine McCann disappeared. But before trying to speak to her, I come to Germany to clarify with Hans Walters of the German Prosecution Service details of their evidence, starting with the claim that Christian B received a call on a mobile number 680, placing him in the Praia de Luz area. Is it possible that 680 was in fact not being used by Christian B, but by somebody else? Es ist natürlich immer möglich, dass äh, ein Telefon von jemandem anders benutzt wird als von demjenigen, der es üblicherweise nutzt. Ähm, ein Telefon kann man verleihen, ein Telefon kann man verlieren, Telefone kann man auch verkaufen. How close can you place the user of 680 to Madeleine McCann's apartment in Pride de Luz on the 3rd of May? My understanding is that it could be as far as 35 kilometers away, or it could be six or seven kilometers away from Madeline's apartment. Natürlich ist es so, dass Funkzellen immer einen größeren äh, äh, räumlichen Bereich abdecken. Das ist auch dann tatsächlich äh, davon abhängig, an welche Wet Wetterverhältnisse an diesem Tag. I move on to Christian B's vehicles. What have you been able to establish? Aber es ist tatsächlich so, dass diese Fahrzeuge für uns eine große Rolle spielen im Rahmen der Ermittlung, weil Christian B. eben diese Fahrzeuge in Portugal genutzt hat. Über die Ergebnisse dieser Ermittlung kann ich aber im Moment nichts sagen. Have you forensically examined that vehicle? And is there a connection to Madeline to that vehicle and Christian B.? Was ich sagen kann, ist, dass wir keinen forensischen Beweis haben dafür, dass Madeline tot ist. Zu anderen Ergebnissen unserer Untersuchung kann ich im Moment nichts sagen. Wo der Körper jetzt ist, kann ich nicht sagen. Wenn wir das wüssten, dann hätten wir ihn sicherlich gefunden. So, just to be clear, you don't have forensic evidence that links 
Christian B to Madeline having been murdered. We have no forensic evidence for the death of Madeline McKenna. Are you investigating anyone else? No. 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 Just him. Okay. He absolutely believes that Christian murdered Madeleine McCann in Portugal. No doubt about it at all. I have serious concerns over the evidence they have. They don't have compelling evidence in relation to 680 belonging to him. They don't have compelling evidence that 680 was used by him on the 3rd of May. They don't have compelling evidence that he was outside Madeline's apartment. A huge part of this case rests on pinning down exactly where Christian B was when Madeline vanished. Now I have a chance to find this out. A source close to Christian B has told me that he believes he has an alibi for the night of Madeline's disappearance. He says for a two-week period he was seeing an 18-year-old girl in Carvalho, 25 miles away from Praia de Luz. Christian B is saying he was seeing a young girl who was on holiday with her parents in this town. And around 8 o'clock, most nights, he would arrive in his camper van, she would come out of the apartment, and she would sleep in the camper van with him until the early hours of the morning, and then he would leave to go home. That is his alibi. I'm hoping to question Christian B face to face, but first, I must see if these claims of an alibi stand up to scrutiny. Up until now, Christian B has not spoken at all about this period of time, May 2007. Of course, 3rd of May, that's when Madeline goes missing. He is saying that during the period of two weeks prior to the 10th of May, he was with a young girl most evenings. I'm told there is evidence of this alibi. He is saying that on the 10th of May, he took this young girl to the airport because she was leaving the country. While she was there, she was stopped for carrying pepper spray. There is a document which puts that date connected to her with her name at the airport. But Christian B is not mentioned in the police record, so it cannot verify his location. But there's more. On the 9th of May, he is saying he got stopped with her in his camper van at a police checkpoint and they took a photograph of both him and her. After Madeline disappeared on the 3rd of May, the police surrounded Praia de Luz with roadblocks. My colleague in this investigation, Portuguese journalist Jao Gardinho, has checked the police records from 15 years ago. Jao, Christian B is saying that on the Friday the 9th, so a number of days after Madeline disappeared, he was with the young girl in his camper van and he was stopped at a roadblock along this road. Were roadblocks happening at that time? So definitely that's possible because after Madeline disappeared, they put them out for days after the disappearance trying to find any lead. Christian B is saying the police took photographs of him, the girl, and the vehicle. You've asked the police whether those photographs still exist. What have they told you? Well, they told me they don't keep records that long. I mean, it was 14 years ago, so they don't have it any longer. What we can't validate is whether or not it happened to him because those photographs don't exist. My assumption is that it may be true. It's quite possible. It's possible, but not proven. The best way to test Christian B's alibi would be to speak to the young woman herself. I managed to track her down to Germany in a small, quiet town where she lives now, age 32, with her partner, and I have her address. So literally just up around the corner here is the home address of the most important witness for this whole investigation. I've been here for hours watching the address, and there's been no movement at all. It's a delicate situation. I want to make sure she answers the door so that I can speak to her privately. 
I'm having to tread really carefully because what I don't want to do is upset or destroy her life, but she is his alibi. And therefore, I need to get to the bottom of that. So my thought is to send her an email. So here goes. I've done it in English, and then I've also done translate in German. Gob. Fingers crossed. I return to the house the next day, but by lunchtime, Christian B's alibi has not returned my email. She may be nervous about talking to me, and her partner may know nothing about her alleged fling. It's a hard decision to make. Do I wait? Or do I go and bang on the door and see if she's there? If she is living with someone, they could be at work and they could come back, and that would then potentially scup her talking to me. She's such a vital witness. Let's give it a go. but it's her partner who answers the door. So, I am a former detective. I'm investigating Christian B in relation to Madeleine McCann. Christian B is using her as an alibi. Did you know that? Take care, bye-bye. I've managed to get some really important information. I spoke to her partner, who has told me that during May 2007, she was in Portugal. He describes it. I showed him a document that says that she was in Portugal, Faro, on the 10th of May 2007, and he said, you've got good information, and I said, well, that's seven days after Madeline disappeared. And I asked him, was she with him that night? And he basically says, she can't be sure. It was 15 years ago, she cannot remember. But he does say, from her account, she was there in May 2007. I'm excited because I'm now filling in those little missing pieces of the jigsaw puzzle that nobody else has got. It's not rubbish, it's not fabrication. Perhaps he is telling the truth. I've spent four months corresponding with Christian B and he had agreed to meet face to face, but the prisoners blocked our visit, citing safety concerns. So I write back asking for verifiable facts, proving where he was when Madeline disappeared. So I've just spoken to the office and a letter has arrived from Christian B. He's answered my questions, four pages, four pages worth. So he's obviously saying something. This story has played out in the media. We've got the German prosecutors making their allegation and we've got silence from Christian B. But now he opens up about the allegations against him, and specifically around May 2007 and what he says he was doing. So he says he goes to jail and comes out in December 2006. And from that point on, he does not return back to Praia de Luz. He says from February 2007, he started dealing drugs to people around the beach. Christian B says he spent time on Barranco Beach in his camper van. It's 20 kilometers from Praia de Luz. He's opened up to me and said to me, I was selling drugs on a large scale. 
I'd make trips back and forth to Spain, six or so times, bringing drugs back, marijuana, making a good living. And when you compare that to his convictions for drugs, that's correct. It wasn't until after 2007 that he started to get his first drugs conviction. This is what puts credibility to his letter. This is a photograph that's been widely circulated, which is his VW camper van. I've done some research as to where that photograph was taken, and I know that photograph was taken at Barranco Beach, and he's now telling me that he was dealing drugs on Barranco Beach. So it ties up. So the alibi. This is where it gets really interesting. So he says that the week including the period of time that Madeline went missing, he met up with a girl, let's call her the alibi, and he spent time with her overnight. He would drive up to Carvallario, he would park up there, she would come out of the apartment where she was for a week, staying with her parents, they'd spend time together in his camper van, she would go home a few hours later, and he would stay until around 10 o'clock in the morning, and then he would drive back to the beach area. Crucially, Christian B still doesn't remember if he was with his claimed alibi on the evening Madeleine McCann disappeared. And his alibi only covers the hours of midnight to 2 a.m. when he says they were together, but Madeleine was taken two to three hours earlier. He does reveal a key new piece of evidence, a police photograph with his alibi at a roadblock a few days after Madeline vanished. He says he was stopped and there was a person taking photographs. He challenged that person and was told by the Portuguese police that that officer is from New Scotland Yard taking photographs. That's giving specific detail which can be checked out because you could go to New Scotland Yard and ask them questions. We've obviously been to the Portuguese, they don't have a record, but perhaps New Scotland Yard do. This letter provides great facts. Is it the definitive version that immediately shuts down the German prosecutor's case? No, it's not. It provides information that can be checked out or could be proved to be wrong, and now, the onus is back on the prosecution to check all this out. After six months of investigation, speaking to his alibi's partner and communicating with Christian B himself, does this put us any closer to knowing if he is connected to the disappearance of Madeleine McCann? The whole basis of my investigation has been around to establish whether or not Christian B is responsible for the abduction and murder of Madeleine McCann. I have had the unique opportunity that nobody else has had to put to Christian B all my evidence and get his response. Even with the recent developments in the case, making him an official suspect. My conclusion is that whilst Christian B is a child sex offender, uses the internet, indeed grooms children through relationships. I have real doubts there is enough evidence yet to prove it is Christian B. That... In response, the German prosecution has said, Christian B's lawyer, Mr. Fulcher, has said. Christian B has said. <laughs>